Welcome to our review on alkanes from crude oil. First thing to consider then is what is crude oil? And quite simply, crude oil is a fossil fuel. We know it's a fossil fuel because it was formed from the remains of living things that lived in the sea millions of years ago. Once they died, they became buried deep in the seabed and that eventually has turned into crude oil. Now, because this takes millions of years to form, we view this as a non-renewable resource. Now, what we actually have, as with all non-renewable resources, is that they will run out because we're using them at a faster rate than they're being remade. There are two other fossil fuels we should also remember at this point, which are natural gas and coal. So one phrase that they do like to use every once in a while to do with fossil fuels is the word finite. So all fossil fuels are finite resources, and that just tells us that there's a limited supply available and therefore they will run out. And the reason behind that, as we've already said, they're being used up faster than they're being made. When we consider what crude oil is made of, it's actually a mixture of many different hydrocarbons. And if you remember, a hydrocarbon is a chemical made of hydrogen and carbon only. So our crude oil has these hydrocarbons of all different lengths. So while crude oil is this mixture of different hydrocarbons, it's not overly useful to us. To make it useful, we've got to split it into its individual fractions. And the way we do that is through a process called fractional distillation. Fractional distillation uses a fractionating column, which you can see on the right hand side there. And what happens is at the very bottom is where we're heating it. So the bottom is very hot, about 350 degrees Celsius. And then as you go further up the column, it gets cooler. So our fractionating column has a temperature gradient where it's hottest at the bottom, coolest at the top. Because our hydrocarbons that make up crude oil are a mixture of different sizes, they actually have different boiling points. So what we find is that the more carbon atoms they've got in the chain, then the longer the molecule is, and therefore the stronger the intermolecular force is holding them together, which means they've got a higher boiling point. So what we find is the longer chains have a higher boiling point because they've got stronger intermolecular forces. And the opposite is true about our smaller hydrocarbon chains. They've got weaker intermolecular forces, so a much lower boiling point. What we find is, as those different fractions start moving up this column, then they eventually get to a point where they're going to condense. At that point, they'll run off and be collected as that individual fraction. Now, each fraction may contain substances that have similar boiling points. So it's not just a single chemical that comes out. It's a mixture of chemicals that are all approximately the same boiling point. You should also make sure that you know the order of which the fractions come out of the column. So LPG is the gas at the very top, then petrol, paraffin, diesel, heating oil, fuel oil, and then bitumen coming off at the bottom. So what we find is those hydrocarbons with the highest boiling point will leave at the bottom of the column, and those with the lowest boiling point leave at the top of the column as a gas. It's also worth remembering that the atoms that make up our hydrocarbons are held together by covalent bonds. Now, covalent bonds are strong bonds and they're certainly stronger than intermolecular forces. So what we find is when we boil that crude oil, it's the intermolecular forces that are broken, not the covalent bonds. So it's the intermolecular forces that allow the individual molecules to separate to form a vapor it's not the covalent bonds within the molecule getting broken. So we're not actually breaking the hydrocarbon chain. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe what crude oil is and why it's described as a finite or non-renewable resource. You can describe the process of fractional distillation and you can explain how the actual crude oil is separated into those individual fractions.